Hello again, everyone. We are back on stage this time with uh, Carole davis filler from Accenture. Uh, you are um, the sustainability and technology uh, lead at Accenture. We also have Hervé Dumas, who used to be group CTO for uh, L'Oréal until very recently, and you changed for a completely new group, sustainable IT di uh, new position, sustainable IT director, because L'Oréal is investing a lot in uh, its sustainability. And then we have uh, Patrick Devis uh, from uh, Belfius, you are the CIO at uh, Belfius. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. And also, I must thank you personally, Patrick, because you accepted kindly to become the president of the board of our association in Belgium, so uh, the, the, the Belgian Institute for Sustainable IT. Um, I will. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Um, so I will uh, not spend a lot of time uh, about uh, talking about your CVs, etc. Because otherwise, with your experience, I think that we could spend the whole session just on that. So if you allow me, I will start with a few questions. Um, don't hesitate to raise a few questions in the chat. I will try to follow the chat at the same time in parallel. Uh, I'll start with a question for Hervé, uh, because there's something special about your position. As I mentioned, you just joined, well, you joined L'Oréal in January last year as a group CTO. One of the things that attracted you there, as far as I know from our discussions, was that there was sustainability within the uh the, the responsibilities that you that you had there uh, it was already a, uh, an important topic in your previous job as cto at uh, veolia um i was wondering at l'oréal uh, before you joined actually do you know what started the reflection about sustainable it uh, did it come from top management from the csr officers from it uh, how did it come oh there is no one single source uh, obviously unfortunately uh it's a combination. It's a combination of, of combination of, of movement, of uh, concern, analysis, uh, trends. Um, obviously, it's a company subject for a long, long time um, with different kind of uh, strategic program uh, starting uh, years ago uh, in 2005 on some area regarding uh, uh, production and the distribution center, the plants, the distribution, distribution center, and much more. And from time to time, um, it, uh, there is a kind of expansion and analysis of the, uh, uh, of the subject, obviously, always working on, uh, on science-based uh, science target uh, in the uh, ways of working, company culture, and to, to, to well define as well as possible uh, what are the levers within an enterprise mm -hmm. uh, with a kind of business, with a kind of geographical footprint, etc. Uh, what must be uh, achieved to allow, uh, let's say, a sustainable uh, way to operate in a, a safe operating model uh, within the planet limit? Huh? Uh, uh, that's, uh, that's the key. And as it is uh, true for L'Oréal, but it's, uh, I think that Carol will confirm that, it's true for all and every uh, uh, enterprise uh, as the, um, let's say, IT and tech capabilities are more and more embedded on all and every uh, area of the value chain. Uh, it's bigger and bigger, uh, more than ever important during the, uh, let's say, this uh, pandemic situation and uh, COVID crisis, but it's just an illustration of or an acceleration of this trend. So it's a combination. Uh, even if it is, let's say, to be uh, fully honest and it's normal, and uh, all the experts that have shared some, uh, some deep knowledge uh, during the previous session uh, confirm that it's something that is still uh, a little bit new huh, for, the, uh, for the IT community. Uh, we want to accelerate. The decade is really key also for this subject for all and every subject, but also for this subject. And part of this acceleration is uh, the ambition to onboard all and every uh, uh, IT expert, employees, whatever is the, uh, and it is not only on the environmental axis, but also on the, uh, on the social one. Mm -hmm. Indeed, what's interesting, and we have a good uh, comparison uh, between two completely different types of companies, a bank with Belfius and L'Oréal, where you've got industrial processes first and foremost. In your case at L'Oréal, uh, the percentage of IT compared to the total footprint 
is of course minimal, but nevertheless, there's clearly this decision by top management that every department must reduce its footprint. There's nothing can stay as it is, uh, if I may say. Yeah, exactly. The shift is uh, is for everybody, and it is there is a, an understanding of the let's say the capability to succeed will come from uh, let's say a, a combination of of movement of awareness and knowledge. Obviously, mm -hmm. and it's part of uh, of the program also. And uh, based on this awareness and knowledge, the movement will be created with all and every contributors within the organization. Obviously, but when we look at uh, the uh, the IT world, there is also within the strategic axis the capability for enterprise to empower of the ecosystem mm -hmm. all, all together. And I I, I love the, the quote uh, or the, the slide presented a few minutes ago regarding uh, the the um, the capability of human beings uh, to achieve great things, uh, great things. Uh, if we look at the past uh, 10 or, or 20 years regarding the ICT uh, world, the expansion, the industrialization, the incredible innovation and capability to, to move uh, in a way uh, this digital world at scale, uh, something very unique huh, in, the, in our uh, history, mm -hmm. the scale of, uh, of digital uh, and, uh, and the capability to have uh, to provide performance and uh, incredible uh, incredible uh, services uh, for billions uh, of users. Uh, if we use all this expertise, this uh, knowledge, and sometimes we have seen this morning uh, with the uh, uh, eco-design uh, session, but sometimes you need a very, very deep, deep tech knowledge yep. for being able to address some, uh, some subject. All this knowledge we must be combined Uh, to address uh, a complex situation. It's true, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite complex. And for it being able to scale one by one solution that can be affordable, achievable in our context. One, one of the complexities, you mentioned the technical capacity, but there's also the decision making from top management. Uh, uh, Carol, if I may ask you, I know that Accenture conducted uh, last year a European study about the adoption of sustainable IT by organizations, all types of organizations. And would you say that senior management and more particularly IT management is well informed about uh, its impact, the potential benefits, and what were the key lessons that were learned from this study? It's very heterogeneous. Uh, there is a raising information that is shared that digital has both a dark side and a bright side mm -hmm. so uh, it's well it's more and more known that uh, we have in the digital sector a huge responsibility uh, in terms of uh, GAG emissions in terms of energy consumption and other environmental topics but also of course social and ethical topics as uh, Hervé mentioned Uh, so that is well known. It's more and more known also, and there is a willingness within the IT teams to serve the digital, the, not only the digital transformation, but the twin transformation, digital plus sustainable transformation. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a, a more and more shared knowledge. Now, uh, there is uh, the, the challenge of... Uh, training teams it's a transformation topic so you need to train teams to put in place a new government uh, there is this notion of you want to have a dedicated team on sustainability that's the choice of l'oréal or is it a federated network there is the topic as Hervé mentioned of working in a different in a different manner with the, the ecosystem um, so there is all these transformation topics and ob obviously also get the right tools and so on. Mm -hmm. So what we have seen in our, in our study is that uh, the companies that are embarking this twin transformation, digital plus sustainability together, are the most uh, competitive and the most uh, um, yeah, impactful ones. Okay, thank you. Patrick, I'm turning to you um, at, at Belfius. Uh, quite different company, as we mentioned, uh, a, a bank and where IT is actually probably the third, the third uh, emitter uh, after transport and, and buildings. 
what was the trigger for Belfuse to, to start with sustainable IT? And did you, well, when you want to do a transformation, you can always either look at it as a big scale thing or start with a small scale pilot in, in a single department. What did you choose to do? And how did you integrate that into the CSR strategy at Belfuse? A lot of questions. Um, first of all, um, the sustainable approach was already there in the company when uh, when when at IT we decided to join. So um, it's something that that that, that bigger companies do do for uh, for a while right now. And, and and at the beginning, I'm quite sure most most of them did for marketing purposes. Uh, that's quite clear, and and you feel that uh, what what has been marketing has now become a, a genuine, um, a genuine questions companies are asking themselves and feeling their corporate responsibility really, and so we already have also that that kind of uh, of an approach and going from more of something which is uh, just we do what's necessary to to to. To be able to to put it in the in the different reports we we have to to to, to make and uh, and we came to yeah but you know it, it's a real it's a real topic and uh, so so that real topic was already on the agenda we we had uh, we have had uh, for for some times uh, the different goals that that we were having as a company and, and in in the last months the the company decided of 10 different goals it could have. And uh, we as IT, we did quite easy. We translated each of these goals to the way IT could support this, these goals. Because indeed, uh, in the, we are not an industry, so, uh, so IT is, is, is a real high contributor to, uh, to, to greenhouse gases emissions. Um, if, if you look at uh, what we are using by ourselves, we are indeed a, a huge contributor. But if you look at what our customers are using uh, via our, uh, our mobile app, for, for as, as an example, then we are by far the, the biggest contributor to GHG in, uh, in the company. And uh, then I come back to what Tongi said. Uh, it's, it's, um, yeah, it's just thinking that... Uh, Internet and and my mobile are free, and so uh, yes, uh, our customers look for their uh, for their uh, their banking applications uh, on the average thirty four times a month. Mm -hmm. I'm sure nobody has any use of looking at it so much times a month, but but on the average they do. Uh, there is something like it's free, so so let's use it. Which means that we do have two dimension servers and systems on a very high level. Which means that yes, we contribute a lot. So mm -hmm. it, it was it was very clear for us to 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 have IT to, to contribute to that because we were uh, we were high contributors and it was also very easy to translate uh, corporate goals to, uh, to 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 IT goals as mm -hmm. uh, simply said. Okay, thank you. Uh, I know that you decided to assign dedicated resources. Would you would you recommend for large organizations because that's what we're talking about to assign really specific dedicated resources or just a few uh, a percentage of the, the the resources of different people and also what kind of external support have you identified as necessary to succeed when you're a, a large organization? Oh, you know, I think you I think you you need both. You need dedicated people. Otherwise, your your Standard people, if I can call them like that, your standard people, they, they, have, they have lots of things to do. So they, they have to be, um, they have to be encouraged. They have to be, they have to, to see the light. They, they have to be informed about what what's doing. They, they have to, to, to get the necessary means. They have to get the necessary information. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you, you need persons and people who have only one task in their, in their job description, which is working for a better, a sustainable company. So I think it's very important to have those ones, those persons who, who are dedicated, but they, they just can't move the company by themselves. They have to, they have to take with them the, the, the whole bunch of the, of the company. And, and to do that, uh, most of the time you need to have eye openers, mm -hmm. uh, having people to, to understand that what they do first has impact and second, that they are not doing it quite right at the moment when you look at that specific aspect. Of course, we're very happy of our app, but we never looked significantly at the way it's produced in JG. Mm. Now that people become aware of that, they begin changing. So the first thing you have to do is to measure. Uh, in, in Dutch, people say, measuring is knowing. Um, 
as long as you don't have done that, you, you just cannot inspire people to, to have the, the idea to change. And in doing that, you, you know, Olivia, your, uh, the, 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 the metrics that, 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 uh, that companies like, like yours are, are able to provide are very useful, of course, because they, 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 they give you the mirror you need. And, uh, and sometimes looking in that mirror is, yeah, it's not that, uh, it's not that fine. Uh, it's not Snow White uh, telling you that you're, uh, that you're the most beautiful in the country. Mm. You, you mentioned earlier in the previous answer about uh, Hervé, you wanted to have a react? Uh, just uh, thanks, Patrick. I fully agree with, with you when, when it is feasible for, for an organization, at least during uh, this period of time, uh, for the proper initialization, uh, awareness, obviously, training, learning, support also, um, it's, it's, it's good uh, to have dedicated time and uh, so dedicated people uh, when it is feasible uh, on, on this subject because the initialization is key. And part of the mission of this dedicated resources is obviously to, um, to, to, to broadcast and to, uh, to enable the execution at scale embedded within all and every uh, IT uh, sites, activities, and uh, it's, uh, it's uh, a, a, change, a change, an additional, uh, let's say, expertise that must be combined with the existing one regarding all and every aspect of our activities, not only uh, the development, the, uh, the run, uh, the support, but also the contract management, the vendor management, the purchasing, etc., etc. It's a very rich area and uh, the capability to interact uh, with all uh, stakeholders internally and externally is, uh, is really key during this, uh, this phase. Mm. You're, you're if I may, uh, yes, Carol, go ahead. If I may, Olivier, I, I completely agree with both of you, uh, Patrick and, and Hervé. In my experience, is you need four elements in your organization. You need a core team, dedicated team, for all the, the reasons you mentioned, for sure. Uh, the transformation needs dedicated people. You need the federated network, so to make sure that the, the full all the organizations are part of the, of the transformation. I, I, I'm adding two elements. One, mindset shifters. I can see people, any kind of experience level or, or management level or not, they are knocking at the door. They say, I want to be part of it. How can I contribute? And how can I help? I know stuff. I've been learning stuff on my side personally. How can I help? Mm -hmm. Those, and maybe that's what you call eye openers, uh, Patrick. So we, we also try to organize this group of mindset shifters. And last but not least, I believe you need top management and people at someone that is nominated, incentivized and have the mandate at the top uh, you know, board uh, that, that is uh, uh, responsible for sustainable IT. You, you've touch two points that are appearing in the chat and in the Q&A because there's the two of them. So uh, one of the points you mentioned was the enablers. On the contrary, Simon is asking, do you face people that are rejecting uh, or do not understand the sacrifices that it may imply? I, I don't know who wants to, to answer to that one. Of course there are, but, but you know, it, it's so, so difficult to be against something like that. And the, the number of persons which are, which are, uh, pro that, that kind of approach is so huge that one you don't hear them them much and two they don't have real uh, power to to yeah to to, to 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 break down the project or to, to bring its space to a lower gear um, mm -hmm. I don't it's one of the of the well of the <laughs> there are not so much projects in which you feel such a low resistance to change. Mm -hmm. It's really something people feel they need to do, and the ones that don't feel it don't dare to say it. <laughs> okay. So nevertheless, they, they, they float yeah. away. nevertheless, I don't know if Hervé and, uh, and Patrick, you, you will recognize that in your companies. What I hear sometimes is, I love what you're talking about, Carole, but guess what? My KPIs, my, uh, I don't know, are not yet aligned. I don't have the time for it. So... How can I do that on top of what I'm already doing and supposed to do and incentivized to do? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and the second thing is, it goes with it. Huh? It's uh, uh, how you move to the willingness and then bar engaging the teams and so on. 
and having also the investment that goes with it. Because, you know, sustainable IT is like any tra other transformation project. You need money. You need tools. You need time. You need, you need money. So the thing is how you allow all of that ingredients, not only the good willingness, but the time and the money. Mm. And I guess that for that, you need to involve guys and uh, for, for the proper uh, transmission of this, uh, of these new ways of, uh, of working. But it's true that it's a combination of factors, including uh, the, uh, the subject of the uh, uh, new kind of KPI, new kind of objective. And it's a company movement. Uh, uh, what I like a lot within the uh, approach within uh, uh, my organization, it's, uh, it's really a company ambition. Uh, the umbrella is called L'Oréal for the Future, and there is some really key, key target at the earth of the business regarding product, uh, raw materials, etc. And the IT is within this with, uh, movement. Uh, and, uh, and it's key also to create the link between uh, this community uh, inside the organization and the métier, the businesses, to start to, on this area, speak the same language. Uh, there's one question which directly relates to that, and I'm not sure that Patrick and Hervé will, will be in a position to answer because of the, the, the fact that your companies are pretty much uh, directly involved in that. But Carol, there's a question about how do you convince management of that need? And maybe you can also reply in case you would not be convinced, Patrick and Hervé. Uh, many people in the, in, the, in the room are actually in the teams and they would like to uh, convince their management that something needs to be done. Uh, and it's very difficult to change the objectives that you get, etc. if your management is not aligned. So I have two magic sticks. One is to have them in, uh, engage personally, facing the facts, the scientific facts. And we've uh, chosen to deploy at Accenture very largely what is called the climate fresque or climate collage that is created by a French NGO and deployed widely in France and now beyond. Uh, it's gathering the uh, scientific facts of the IPCC. Mm -hmm. uh, and there has been, you know, the report that has been issued uh, in August um, in a very fun, interactive way. And for the top management, there is a before and an after, even a two hour session of this. Because you see the facts, you like, you have this uh, punch in your stomach, seeing the reality of what the scientists are telling us for the mm. last decades. And yeah, you mentioned the, the, the climate college, so the, 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 the fresque du climat. There's also the fresque du numérique, the digital college. Yeah, exactly. And we created uh, on our side green IT awareness sessions focusing like la fresque du numérique on, on, uh, on this. So first of all, there is this top management uh, needs. I mean, of obviously, if, if it's human beings, and if they are engaged, uh, if you, they see in personal interest in it, that's number one. The second majestic, of course, is to talk core business. Mm -hmm. So to talk what's the financial analyst, how the financial analysts are seeing the company based on the ESG results mm -hmm. and how what's the risk of not uh, reaching the commitments that the top management has already uh, often taken. If I take, uh, I'm working, for example, uh, with Renault right now, Luca Dimeo has said, okay, here is the climate change, here's the target. Guess what? If they are not going to reach those targets, the financial analyst will, will take that into account. So we talk business, we talk about financial analysts, we talk about obviously consumers, how uh, this is moving. We talk about uh, employees, you know, go back to employees who now, uh, brand new, uh, coming out from engineering school or management school, uh, you know, they are willing, the young people, they are willing to embark. And even me, I'm huh, 15 years old. I don't want to work for a company that has no care about uh, the environment and how my kids uh, and myself are going to live in 10 years from now. So top management, make them feel. And second, put the, the business facts in front of them, specific to the industry and uh, specific to their particular uh, business. Thank you. 
Patrick, to, to change a bit of, of subject, on, on Tuesday evening, um, there was a, a conference at uh, Louvain-la-Neuve organized by uh, the, the, our partner, the uh, Doctoral School on the Sustainable IT, and with Alter Numeris and others. And um, one of the questions that was raised by one of the, the, the audience was um, about a French French bank, but uh, the argument could be could could be questioned about uh, uh, any bank. Um, he said, hey, it's very good that this major French bank is doing green IT and reducing its own footprint, etc. But they are still investing so much on uh, like petrol industry and so on. Um, is it worth doing green IT when you are a, a bank compared to the investment and actually uh, green finance as it should be in this case? I, I think it, it's definitely worth it because you also try to, to, to make steps forward in, the, in, in green financing. Um, most, of, most of companies are, are now uh, um, de describing new goals in terms of, of sustainable financing. Uh, and, and sometimes it's, it's, quite, it's quite difficult to, 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 to explain to people. Um, nowadays, uh, let, let, let's take, a, let's take a, a quite a controversial example, Total. Uh, it's quite a controversial company. Um, would you grant some money to Total? It's quite, it's quite a difficult. If you do, then yeah, you will be seen as the one who is granting money to Total. But if not any company does, then Total first will run bankrupt. But second, you will not give them the change to really the, the chance to really change what they're doing. And and most of the companies are also embracing some kind of a, of a green transformation. So what you see more and more is that the, that credit granting is done subsequent to some conditions, and that that banks are, are still financing total, but only for its ecological transition. That they don't finance anymore the, the traditional activities. Of course, when you look at the balance sheet, the, the thing you see is a credit of. 10 million or 10 billion to total, but you, you don't see what it's aimed at. And, uh, the, and that's what you, what, what you see happening today is, is also from, from the European Central Bank, a, a real push and, uh, and also from, uh, from, uh, from a regulatory point of view, a push to have banks using their balance sheets to, uh, to, to push in the direction of more sustainability. And banks do have a lot of new uh, constraints and uh, do have a new uh, a lot of new reportings they do have to produce to to ensure that they are really using their 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 huge balance sheets and their huge uh, lending and, and borrowing possibilities to uh, to organize it in in the right direction mm -hmm. and well, it's well, total energy now yep yeah indeed <laughs> what, what, I've, what I've noticed uh, by talking to different companies is that um, the companies who are actually doing something and really embarking into sustainable IT, most of them are not publishing about it. They, they have a, a couple of sentences here and there, but they don't advertise about it because uh, there's kind of a fear of being uh, of talking about greenwashing or something like that. And actually, more and more companies are really trying to achieve something and then be able to talk about the results rather than just saying we, we, we've started doing something. But um, one of the, the counter examples that I've seen is that CSR, generally speaking, is not taken into account at decision making level, at senior and media management level. Um, I'll take a simple example, but I've got several. Uh, like, for example, there was a decision to reduce the budget for company cars in a, in a very big company in Belgium. Uh, nothing was discussed about uh, environmental. It was just for financial reasons. And then in the CSR report, it was trans tra uh, transformed into uh, a reduction of CO2 emissions. Um, how do you see in your own companies, Raven Patrick, and Carol, maybe at your, at your clients as well, do you see that CSR starts to become a, a decision factor uh, with a specific weight in decision-making processes? I think that it's part of the shift uh, mm -hmm. because, let's say, within this decade, we are entering into the understanding of there is no more economic value without value, uh, sustainable value. It's, it's no more possible. And, this understanding for all and every kind of activity within, uh, within the enterprise is, as I say, an introduction, a journey. Uh, mm -hmm. It is not uh, from uh, uh, yesterday to, uh, to, to today, it's a journey. Uh, so it is the reason why 
let's say, uh, uh, part of the plan, the, the uh, awareness, upskilling of all and every uh, métier, and not only in IT, is really key to share common understanding of the risk explained by, uh, by Carol. We are at risk. Mm -hmm. We know that. Uh, we, uh, we have to believe what we know in terms of uh, is, is the reason why science-based uh, approach is really key. We have to believe what we know. As you explained, Olivier, if I if I use the uh, the, the area of uh, of uh, of L'Oréal, my, my my enterprise, the what we are able to measure today in terms of uh, IT footprint is not that big compared to compared to the global footprint, including scope free of the company. It's quite normal. Um, nevertheless, as it is embedded and that is key in terms of ambition to create the beauty of the future and to be the company of the future in a sustainable manner. Uh, and we have a decade to, to achieve that. It is more and more seen as the critical resources. Mm -hmm. and we have seen uh, during the, the previous session of the day that for, for this understanding, from upstream to downstream, we have to move from an area, uh, I know a little bit, uh, enterprise, large, large organization and the ecosystem, we, are, we have focused during years on our, let's say, usage to optimize mm -hmm. uh, the cost, the performance, uh, the availability, uh, and in a way, uh, trying to optimize the added value of the information system within, uh, within enterprise and to manage the expansion, the growth. Um, for being able to decouple the growth from the impact, and this equation is, is quite complex. And this reason why it is, I think that it is really a journey with an iterative approach that, that says that what can be achieved uh, uh, in short term, what could be the target on long term. It is a reason why it's quite complex hein, to, to, to provide, uh, let's say, uh, a dedicated target uh, on, on IT for a long time. I think it will be iterative target and objective. Um, to make some progress because progress matters a lot. Uh, one size fits all solution does not exist as far as I know mm -hmm. uh, for, for IT. So it's a combination of movement, progress, fighting a, 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 against a kind of uh, obsolescence and obesity that exists within enterprise information system, huh? whatever is the, uh, I know quite a lot of information system. There is always at different scale a kind of uh, of obesity it could be uh, it could be addressed on the data subject it can be addressed on the uh, all the uh, capability for drp backup uh, uh, the uh, example of usage of data reusage of data compared to the amount uh, shared this morning if, if even if it is a big order of magnitude we know that more or less it's true everywhere at different scale uh, it's valuable to uh, to to address that uh, the tricky subject of the uh, multiplication of, uh, of devices and the uh, lifetime of devices that is not only linked to hardware quality, but also linked to what has been explained also on, uh, on some session to software, huh? starting by the uh, um, operating system and, uh, and all the layer uh, of, uh, of different kind of software and li associated life cycle because the target and eco design principle can ease also all the uh, the life of uh, all the ecosystem if we are able to do the shift and uh, and globally this ecosystem have to move to a business model based on volumes to something else much mm -hmm. more circular and it will take time carol i have an example where uh, i can see that sustainability is already part of the decision in the it sector Maybe uh, people are uh, connected from SNCF, but have uh, received an RFP where the French railways say uh, su your sustainability, uh, you know, explanation, what, how you embed that in your uh, digital services is going to weigh 20% of uh, the, the, how you are, uh, you are mm -hmm. rated overall. The price is 30%. Mm -hmm. So we are beginning to see in decision making, in selecting uh, IT partners, a significant weight on how sustainability is em embedded. And we've decided you know, to embark on a sustainability by design 
uh, just you know exactly to meet this uh, requirement. Uh, our target at Accenture is each and every proposal we, we make, each and every proposal we make, uh, will embed sustainability by design. Mm -hmm. Whether and it's the, yeah, the, the French government is also starting to push exactly. The, I was I was uh, going to talk the, about that uh, the, the roadmap that uh, the French government has issued the roadmap for digital and environment uh, is clearly mentioned that each and every uh, public city, public uh, sector should uh, include that in their RFP. Now, if we enlarge the scope and go into the business as a whole, the issue is, do you have the real data to make mm -hmm. decisions taking into account sustainability? If I am in procurement, if I am in supply chain, do I have in my tools at the same place demand management, time, financial KPIs, and sustainability KPIs. And that's where us, IT, we can also help the entire business to bring the right data mm -hmm. at the table, at the right table for decision. Mm. Indeed. Um, also, that there's a, a lack of offering, even within IT. Uh, I, I discuss regularly with uh, uh, people from several companies in Belgium, uh, like transport companies, etc., and they try to apply green IT um, purchasing principles or sustainable IT principles. And the, the, the problem that they find is that there's not enough providers with a good offering. So even if you put a weight on that, but everyone is at zero, it doesn't make much a, a difference yet. Slightly different question, uh, I don't know, for anyone who wants to answer. Do, do you already... Did you already implement, or Carol, did you see at clients, implementation of a cost uh, of emissions? Like Solver, I know they do that. Uh, they, for every project, they estimate the, the, the emissions that they will produce, and there is a, a cost associated to that. Is, do you have something similar, and do you feel that the cost associated is sufficient to make a difference in the decision-making process? So it's really in euros. Huh? They, they, they price the, the, the emissions in euro uh, at Solver. So the chemical survey, I'm not doing yeah, the... Yeah, so I've seen that at uh, some clients, not that many, um, and uh, and it's purely internal. So there is, yeah. as you were describing, an internal price of uh, carbon footprint uh, of, of CO2 to, uh, to CO2 equivalent. But, I mean, this is, this is still... Um, we, we think it's still to be tested and so on. Um, I was discussing with the head of um, ADEM, so ADEM is the national agency in France uh, uh, regarding the environment and uh, the energy uh, management. He was saying that he, don't, he doesn't believe that there will be a significant change of habits mm. if we do not include a price signal so, or a cost signal, if we not, do not embed that. And that's, that's, I think, the challenge we have in front of us is... Uh, Right. I mean, taking both at the same level, taking, uh, converting everything, financial KPIs and CSR, CSR KPIs, and in particular carbon footprint, into the same language to, to take decisions with everything, uh, finance and non-financial elements altogether. But, but Still, uh, yeah. you, uh... I, I don't fully agree with, with, with that point of view because it's, you know, it's like saying you, you can translate everything in money. Of course, in a company, you can also lay off 50% of your personnel, putting it in a business case and saying, okay, it's so much millions of euros, so the business case is still okay, so it's fine. It's not fine. It, it's, it, 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 it must be seen as something that has to be reduced, not, not regarding the cost. Otherwise, it's just too easy. It's, it's you know, like, like paying to, to offset your emissions. Okay, go ahead, pollute. You, you, you just have to pay the money. I think that that's, that's not the, that, that's not the, it's not giving the right mindset. It, it gives the mindset that money can offset everything, which is, which is clearly not the case. But that's, that's great, Patrick, but look at the individual stage. Yes, yeah. there are people, because that's the same. Huh? We individuals take decisions oh. every day, whether but, I buy but, a car but, but or a machine the uh, the, yeah, the, with the lowest it. price or whether I take all their considerations. In, uh, so, and there will be people that say, yes, I want to very much take qualitative elements in play and those who will focus only on price. So I think that, I mean, I agree with you that in a perfect world, 
there are qualitative elements and such huge, uh, you know, uh, impactful elements should be taken into account without any conversion. But guess what? I'm afraid in some cases, and because we need to embark everyone, all types of companies, then the conversion might be helpful for some types of decisions. Uh, and I, can, I can just use a small example. We, we, we launched uh, at the beginning of, of December a, a new uh, a new platform for, for, for brokerage and uh, trading on, on stock exchanges. And um, what we do in that platform is each time you, you, you want to buy a company which we uh, evaluate it's not sustainable, you get a huge pop-up telling you, you know, you shouldn't do that. And these are the reasons. Okay, if you want to do it, we, we, can, we, we cannot refrain you from, from doing go ahead but i feel this has a lot more impact than just saying you know if you if you go for for that kind of thing in you will not pay five euros for your uh, for your uh, for your order you, you will have to pay seven or or, or or even 15. um i think we, we are still in a moment where uh, and we see it by ourselves when when our um consciousness of, of what, what, what are the, con, the, the consequences of what we're doing, this consciousness is not always there. Um, it's sometimes having someone ringing a bell for you and, and showing you there, there is, it makes a difference. That's very important. And next to that, probably there will also be some sort of taxes, etc. shift that will start imposing on us the fact that we need to change our our business models. We are closing, uh, coming close to the end of the session. I don't know if one of you has a key message that you still want to pass. Um, uh, My, uh, Julie Sweet, our CEO, uh, and our company is five way well, five hundred thousand people or, or, or more. She has a say. She said every. I mean, she used to say every business is a digital business. So we knew the digital transformation. Now she says every business is a sustainable business. Mm -hmm. Nice one. Uh, Hervé, would you have a... I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very positive in a way, not uh, if I, when I look at the situation of this IT world and all the, the chain from upstream to downstream, that uh, the situation is, is, is at really at risk and, uh, and linked to the volume and the projection of the impact of the continuous expansion and uh, at an incredible pace of the digital world. Nevertheless, the very positive thing for me is I really believe that th this is a fantastic challenge opportunity for this IT community based on their knowledge, their capability to, to change also. If we look at the past year, the capability to change, to address new way to deliver, to onboard, to, uh, for, for a significant movement, for the move to cloud, for example. That makes sense in a way because it's, it's a shared infrastructure that you can uh, share with others and do not use uh, only uh, dedicated uh, and uh, private resources. And you can imagine new design based on, uh, on of, uh, with uh, the, the scalability, the automatic, the elasticity of an information system will be key for the mm -hmm. coming years, for being able to deliver the expected business value only when it is necessary, only when it is used uh, with the appropriate performance and, uh, and capability to compute and to scale down when it is uh, no more use. For example, it is a fantastic opportunity for the IT community to review the design of many, many digital services and all the ecosystem. So I'm very positive for this community within enterprise and within the global ecosystem, including, for example, Accenture, it's, it's, it's the opportunity to be at the right place at the right time and to move in a positive way to avoid under-promise, under-deliver, but to move in a positive way uh, the shift from dealing with these critical resources and continue to deliver the necessary added value capability to the business, because we know that, and it is a plenty of uh, sharing of uh, a lot of example uh, uh, during the session, it is really useful for being able to, to use IT uh, capabilities as it is. We know that. Uh, so the, the more it will stay uh, in a feasible manner at a reasonable cost, 
And uh, we have to also anticipate that uh, if we look at the pressure on, uh, on the electrical uh, component, yep. uh, and tomorrow maybe the energy, uh, the cost of that will change. So uh, mm -hmm. enterprise that will be ready, that will know how to deal on uh, infrastructure, architecture, life cycle management in a better way, they will be in a better economic and business situation in a more sustainable manner. And the social aspect is also uh, something to amplify. Indeed, I, I'm sure that we will use this video as a sharing to, to give to the teams who want to convince their management uh, that they should be moving. Patrick, can I give you the, the last word of this session? Oh, yes, of course. But maybe, you know, I see lots of people asking questions in, in the feed and in the Q&A. I think the time for asking questions is gone. Uh, it's behind us. N now the thing is, start with it. Because even if you don't see a business case today, that's most probably because the parameters will, will change a lot between now and the foreseen horizon. Things will change. And you, you will notice in a, in a couple of years that having, not, not having started yet uh, will have been one of the, 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 the biggest hurdles a company could make. So I think it's not the time to, to ask questions anymore. It's time to go. Thank you. That's and I want to congratulate the EIZ and the uh, Institute du Numérique Responsable for everything you do. I think if in Europe, uh, in France, in, in, in Belgium and in, in, uh, in Europe, we are leading the pack is thanks to people like you. It's because uh, you, you create those moments where we can share and we can motivate each other and uh, start together. Patrick, I completely agree. Let's, let's start and let's accelerate. Thank you very much. More than through key contribution uh, uh, during years for being able to, to have this uh, discussion like that today. Excellent. Thank you. So we've reached the end of this panel discussion. Thank you very much to the three of you for your valuable experience uh, sharing all that uh, openly. It was very good. Um, it's time for everyone to go stretch your legs, grab a cup of coffee, glass of water. Uh, if you are connected on AirMeet, you can use the networking uh, for the next uh, 10 minutes or so. Um, and for those on uh, YouTube, we will uh, have a new live broadcast that will start in 10 minutes as well. So just go back to the session. And that's as a reminder, that's the place where you will be able in a few days to watch the replay of all uh, our sessions. There's also the replay of the doctoral school of the UC Louvain. So see you in 10 minutes. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.